Yes, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for joining us on this program in the studio. It's almost like our little TV show during the pandemic. <laughs> we were started. Uh, we're very happy to be able to talk to artists and to be able to, in this case, talk to you and hear about uh, how you are doing and your work. I see that you are in a natural space. <laughs> I have so one on my back. But... Yeah, it's actually the window. I'm, I'm in Hesifi mm -hmm. at home and uh, mm -hmm. And uh, thank you very much for the invitation huh, to no, thank talk you. a little bit at this moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we're very happy to to be able to discuss a little bit about your work. So uh, just a few words about Shanatas for anybody in the audience that might not know him. But Shanatas is a fantastic artist uh, from... Uh, well, you were born in Maceo, I read, yes. but uh, you're based in Recife and a lot of your work has to do with the Northeast uh, area of Brazil. We'll talk a lot about that um, during this talk. And we have selected some works uh, to, to focus on, but um, please, anybody, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them on the chat section and I will be reading them to uh, Shonatas. Um, I don't know if you want to tell uh, us a little bit about where you are, um, your situation. I know that you were going to do some exhibitions that had to be postponed, like everybody's life that's has yes. gotten a little bit changed. Yeah, that's it. Like, it's a tough moment for everyone, right? And mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm working on a few shows and, uh, of course, they were postponed. So I think it's a little, a little, uh, it's a bit of a moment to get mm -hmm. to the studio, to focus a little bit, to review everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, I, I live here in Recife, uh, in the northeast of Brazil. I've been living mm -hmm. here for 15 years. And uh, my projects uh, take this region as a scenario, as a, as a point of departure to, to speak about, about uh, relations in general and uh, power relations, uh, uh, the borderline between fiction and non-fiction. And uh, I work a lot with uh, videos and uh, also installations with photography. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, I think uh, this combination of uh, of the local being, uh, of, the, of the works being in the same time local, Mm -hmm. as an excuse to reach uh, universal issues. For me, it's, uh, it's been very, 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 a very, very nice way to approach other audiences abroad, mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to get closer in conversation to, to, to some uh, debates that are everywhere. No? Mm -hmm. we, are living, we are living a crisis and uh, I think these definitely changes the mm -hmm. the perspective on on how we are perceiving Absolutely. the world and 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 and, the, and also uh everyone's i think will will have to review and start uh responding differently in the in the projects no absolutely absolutely um and going back to to the northeast of Brazil that appears so much it's like like you said, the scenario of your work, um, you put it very beautifully in an interview that I watched online that you gave in the past uh, about, you know, your work with, I mean, besides the obvious fact that this this is like your personal scenario, this is where you've been living for the last 15 years and uh, where your life happens, but also it's a very, I mean, it's a very uh, meaningful place in Brazil because as, and I think I'm paraphrasing you and please correct me if I'm wrong, the Nordeast is in a way like the point of arrival of like, you know, this encounter in between the cultures and, and, and but in a way like it stayed in time uh, in that moment of encounter and it wasn't part of the, moder the process of modernization of Brazil that changed the country so much during the 20th century. And I think it's fascinating how you have, um, you know, like your work demonstrates these like, um, this character and this like 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 whole region that has all this huge historical significance, but that has been like socially economically left to the side, um, um, and and in that of Brazil as a country. 
Yeah, uh, the Northeast was uh, the first uh, region to be colonized. Mm -hmm. So it has the marks, the, the, the scars mm -hmm. of this process of the Portuguese colonizer, the, mm -hmm. uh, the whole slavery coming from Africa, first for the sugarcane cycles, then uh, later on, the economical ex goes to the south with mm -hmm. uh, the coffee, the mining, and uh, in the industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, so for these young Brazil, somehow the Northeast uh, has the history, has mm -hmm. these heritage, but the deep marks of being in the same time a periphery in, mm -hmm. within Brazil. So yeah. the complexity of these of these zone, uh, uh, for me, I, I was born here. So for me, it's very natural to feel comfortable and to take mm -hmm. these these landscape and these uh, relations to to uh, to try situations. Sometimes in video, sometimes ma managing documents. So mm -hmm. uh, the Northeast became these point of departure. I've experienced uh, working in other places. I've been traveling a lot. Some art residencies uh, uh, mm. made me also experiment working somewhere else, like in Amman, in Jordan. Mm -hmm. And it's been uh, interesting, but some, uh, sometimes uh, even the similarities, uh, the, the possible mm -hmm. parallels make me somehow create a comfortable uh, environment. To, to create the projects, no? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So that's a little bit of uh, of uh, what is it like to be living here still mm -hmm. and producing these these projects. I think uh, showing them uh, abroad somehow I always relate to people people's ideas on what what is a, a tropical zone, a tropical Brazil like. Yeah. So um, addressing issues on architecture and modern architecture, mm -hmm. post-colonialism, we I'm, I'm always dealing with uh, what's the imagery of of, uh, of these audience on on uh, on, mm -hmm. on these Brazilian paradise, which is also uh, completely upside down and uh, full of complexities. No, like uh, yeah. we are in the and middle. Of, yeah. But I think it's fascinating because I think that in being so local, your work becomes absolutely global. Because I mean, Recife could be, it, it is a specific place with a very specific history, but it can also perfectly like work as a metaphor for so many other tropical areas, especially tropical areas, but so many other areas in the world, so many other post-colonial territories, so many other like, um, uh, spaces that depend on like visitors economy, you know, there's a lot of like yes. curators and artists doing research about that in the Caribbean. Um, yes. So um, anyway, I think it's, it's, it's very interesting also that um, I, I always felt like this tension in between the global tendency of the world and how, you know, artists like you are doing work that refers to the very local, but speaks to the very global. And I feel like this moment specifically and this pandemic and the fact that we all have to stay yeah. home, is going to force us to rethink the idea of the local to all of us the same way that you've been doing it for a very long time, right? Yeah, for me, the, the projects, uh, I think I'm aiming on uh, universal issues, no? So mm -hmm. although it looks very uh, exotic, mm -hmm. far away for mm -hmm. most of the abroad audiences. I think it. I'm, I'm aiming on uh, getting to universal mm -hmm. issues that we can find in, like a, a, like anywhere. And mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, in in Upeishi, for example, the, the video mm -hmm. where the fishermen embrace the fish, mm -hmm. I. I think it speaks, uh, it looks like a tale, like a ritual, like a tradition, but actually it speaks mm -hmm. on, on, the, on, on a universal contradiction of being alive. Absolutely, and, uh, let me show it. Let me actually show it while you talk right. about it. I have it right here and I'm gonna put it so, but keep telling, maybe you wanna introduce people to it, but I think it's a perfect way to start showing some of the work actually. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So, um, I can start showing the video. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. All right. Yes, I, I shot these uh, these projects in on the coast of uh, Alagoas in Piaçabuçu and Cururipe with ten different fishermen, mm -hmm. and I my idea was to to use a, a sort of a, a ethnographical photography to to portray these the situation which, which could be totally possible. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's basically a ritual where the fishermen embrace the fish and, until they're dead. So the scene is very violent, but at the same time very ambiguous because it speaks about love and caring as well. And, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, we had no rehearse for that. So they experienced themselves like a, I think it was a sort of a of a request of a, a performance, no, to them mm -hmm. like a, an invitation for a performative situation. And I and for me it was the first uh, project where I where I really experienced uh, such a strong. Uh, Act which first came to me poetically, but then uh, when it's when I started uh, really filming, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that was the moment where I got more aware of all the issues that it addressed, and uh, and I've been having lots of responses in many directions and uh, of people who get nervous by it. Uh, people who connect with the loving, uh, caring gesture, people who get completely upset because of the suffering of the animals. Mm -hmm. So I, I started getting closer to many levels of discussions on, uh, on, on uh, the domination of nature, on the suffering of animals, on the, the veganism discussion and... Uh, and, uh, and uh, activism mm -hmm. and uh, the whole romanticism around the the communities that live uh, in a very uh, subsistence manner mm -hmm. so it, it was a project that for me um, uh, it had many elements that I like very mm -hmm. much fiction and non-fiction a proposal that plays with the idea that of an image that it's almost surreal, but it could be real, mm -hmm. and it it speaks of the of uh, uh, of contradictions that are in the core of the present. And I think with the pandemia and the whole crisis on 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 the mm -hmm. on the corona, I think uh, uh, it's a piece that make makes me think that how the symbolical or the or mm -hmm. the mythological can help us think through these 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 issues that will be more and more the the challenges no like uh, like our challenge of living together of uh, mm -hmm. creating an ethics that uh, is part of our work but also of our daily life mm -hmm. so, uh, something else that is very interesting that you said in 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 other interviews is that something that you like about and it was beautiful and it connects with something we discussed in the previous program with another artist from Chile. And you were talking about like the fact that uh, something while you can be, you know, all this. And in a way, in this, this type of project, you are being an ethnographer, right? Like reaching a culture that is not your own. And something that is very interesting that, um, that you do um, is that the camera formally, the, the way the camera works is you're getting closer and work and closer to these subjects. So I wanted to ask you a little bit about working with these subjects, which is something that I know we will discuss in other, um, in other works that we want to share with the audience also. But I think that it would be great for you to comment it while people see this shot in particular, the excerpt here, which is amazing. 
Uh, well, I, I it, it was the first project I worked with a, a cinema uh, staff. Mm -hmm. No, I invited a mm -hmm. cinematographer. I had a, a producer. Within that, I could focus on being closer to the characters, mm -hmm. to the fishermen, and mm -hmm. uh, and also I could uh, discuss with the cinematographer exactly the 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 mood that where the camera should be how the camera could be behaving sometimes as a behind the camera and uh, experienced uh, trying to experienced uh, being closer to the one being filmed mm -hmm. and also having these uh, this other agent the cinematographer so ah, that's the, really interesting the eroticism here also plays a very like a key role, no? Mm -hmm. So the, at the same time, in the same time, the camera is devouring the man. The man, the fisherman, is devouring the fish. So there is a double game which plays a um, a metaphor of these uh, these ethnographical study, which also tends to the to devour and to mm -hmm. to to consume. The, the subject while exoticizing and so on. So so this complex game of, of where exoticization is part of the of the devouring por process. I think here it's it's something that the the, the photography of the film uh, helped yeah. me engage this feeling. You know, and also the way that you chose to exhibit it because if people can see in this image, I mean, this is like the human scale. So. The project is exhibited in even a little bit larger than human scale, so it's amazing. You somehow feel like you are on that boat with the fishermen, and I think that um, that is super interesting. Nice. Um, but I want to make sure that we have time to talk about other projects also. I mean, let let's show a few of the photos. One last comment about this, but which in a way is the most important one, and it's the reason why you suggested very smartly to start this, uh, talking with this work, is that did works take a whole lot of relevance now that we cannot have, right? Mm. That we cannot have our friends, we cannot have our family members, that we cannot touch each other. And touching yeah. is essentially going to become like a luxury. I mean, I don't know how the world yeah. is going to change, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, yeah, somehow I'm, I'm surprised on how the more symbolical and open, like uh, mm -hmm. a situation we create with the art pieces, is the more uh, it can respond to different moments. Mm -hmm. It's something that I'm I was not very uh, much aware in other projects. Sometimes they are super straightforward, and uh, it's one aspect that made me rethink lots of things. No, mm -hmm. in relation to the to the to the present and uh, to the present uh, challenges. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So uh, if we do like, we can go to the caravana. I mean, yeah. so that people know and that they can visit later. Let me just a little bit here. I want people to see that you have created a special website about these projects and the different ways in which it has been exhibited, which everybody can find in your yeah, uh, website, yeah. which is your name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Caravana. It's a uh, it's uh, one exhibition that I had a chance to mm -hmm. to work on with a, a team of collaborators mm -hmm. that uh, I gathered like uh, twelve of my projects in mm -hmm. uh, in a in a in a sort of caravan by the to the countryside of Pernambuco. Mm -hmm. uh, it was actually three shows. One of them had just opened right before the quarantine started. So it's mm -hmm. on, but not being visited. And mm -hmm. it was a great opportunity of seeing like many of my projects together. And mm -hmm. they are all of them from the past 13 years where I've been producing. And uh, it has, it has a, a total uh, educational pedagogical approach so mm -hmm. it's mainly directed to to schools and programs of adult illiteracy. Mm -hmm. So I had like the the facade of this museum because there is a whole uh, uh, 
a whole situation I created with this original museum called Museu do Homem do Nordeste, mm -hmm. which exists here in Recife. And, uh, and it's a, an anthropological museum. And I borrowed the, the name and started uh, creating posters with the same title of this museum. And, mm -hmm. uh, and this started uh, for me. Show them. It, it started uh, being, becoming a, a sort of a, of, a, of a name that I, as if my own, my projects could all be a second museum to this original mm -hmm. one. And uh, the, the whole thing plays with the, with the sexism around the title. So Museu mm -hmm. do Homem do Nordeste becomes, I take it strictly as if it was a, ma uh, a museum of the masculinity. So I, I start photographing uh, uh, workers and men that I meet in the street. I, mm -hmm. I, I launch classified ads. And uh, this is one of the projects that that uh, that are presented in the caravana. Mm -hmm. We have other other projects. Maybe we can. Yeah. Let's go. Now, further. just to give people some context, uh, and also because somebody in the comments at the beginning of the talk asked for you to talk about this project and about your your work with the work of anthropologist uh, Gilberto Freire. This project is based on, on, on Gilberto Freire, an anthropologist that created the original museum that he's working upon, that he's appropriating to resignify. So yeah, we're very gonna nice keep... remember of, of Freire, which is an anthropologist also born, like a, uh, also who lived and, and was born in Recife, so mm -hmm. who took also these somehow this city as uh, his point of view, mm -hmm. and uh, there is also like a, a project I would like to mention, which is the edu education para adultos, education for adults. Mm -hmm. Let's go see that. Yeah. Yeah, which is also part of the caravana, and uh, mm -hmm. it's a project based on uh, on the posters. Uh, based on the methodology of pedagogue Paulo Freire, mm -hmm. who worked on a, on a, who worked on, a, on, an, on an idea, a radical idea of pedagogy uh, connected to liberation, to social conscience. Mm -hmm. So it was a, a fascinating experimental methodology uh, based on posters, uh, these are not the original ones. These, uh, this, my work combines the original ones uh, from the 70s. Uh -huh. because it was a, was a publishing house here who did uh, posters based on that. And mm -hmm. I started uh, with them. They were, they were used by my mother as a pedagogue. And- uh, Your mom was a teacher. Yeah, she, nice. she, I think she, yeah, she's online here as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's a, she's a pedagogue and uh, she had work during the 80s. Mm -hmm. And uh, I took these posters like uh, in the 2000s, uh, by chance she was uh, like uh, putting everything in order. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was fascinated about the, about the methodology. I, I started reading about it. And uh, it's based mm -hmm. on, on horizontal teaching, so it's not vertical. The the idea of uh, of, uh, of, mm -hmm. of of uh, of learning, the process of learning, happens within exchange of experience. So once you expose yourself more, and you make it more clear, you 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 will receive more. And uh, Paulo Freire understands uh, there are like a, a few key concepts that uh, a certain group, depending on, uh, mm -hmm. on the economical scope and the, in how these groups survives and makes a living and work, with this key conscious, he, uh, the, this group already reads the world. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's just a matter of connecting these words and the situations with these, with these codes. And uh, it's, it's a lot visual based, and mm -hmm. I started photographing new posters to to mix with these with the ones from the 70s. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the end, the installation combines uh, 
uh, like uh, many of these uh, posters with with the original ones, as if we were facing an encyclopedia, which is half pedagogical, half uh, an iconography of these Brazil or even the South, or even a, a South American. Uh, Latin mm -hmm. American uh, iconography, and uh, and I I play a lot with sometimes it's literal, but sometimes the the, the relation word and image becomes uh, much more like a poem, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's it, and it challenges uh, the reading and it plays with the neighboring posters, so it's also. Mm -hmm. It's a project from 2010, and uh, and we, I uh, I presented first at Biennale de São Paulo, the, the 2010 edition, curated by Moacir dos Anjos, who invited me to to do this project, mm -hmm. and it's something that, looking back to that, I, I feel it all. Uh, it's also a project that speaks of these challenge on education, on uh, on the abyss. On of, uh, of uh, social differences here in Brazil. Yeah, and, and it's also very universal, like we said at the beginning, like you were saying, because it's a work that is also talking about. Uh, it's also a project no, that okay. is talking about the idea of. Uh, it's also a project that is talking about the idea of the universal. Um, yeah. Yes, and uh, this figure, Paulo Freire, also uh, is a very interesting uh, pedagogue from his Cife, and he could uh, he cre he he wrote this book, Pedagogy of the Oppressed, and uh, and which was translated like to many languages. So he's mm -hmm. super well known, and his ideas co are completely strong up till now. And uh, and uh, and within these uh, the new fascism waves that we are having here in the government, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, he became like a symbol of something that uh, uh, that the right wing should uh, started to to banish, which is uh -huh. which is very frightening and uh, and uh, interesting to observe, you know. But absolutely. Okay, so let's comment on the next project, which in a way connects to Amazing. what you were just saying. Just in a way, the perfect continuation. Uh, you want to say a little bit about Olivante, the uprising? Yeah, this this was 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, this project is called uh, Olivante, uh, the uprising, and it's based on these on these uh, horse race that uh, I organized with a bunch of friends who were close to, together at that point. And uh, mm -hmm. I think before we, we show a little bit of the video, it's it's nice to mention that mm -hmm. uh, that uh, the local law from Recife is, mm -hmm. uh, is prohibiting, uh, prohibits the, the presence of horses and, uh, and uh, carts in the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, but they are super part of the town. We we can see them uh, going around, uh, people moving uh, goods here and there. And uh, I was fascinated back then to to imagine that that was part of uh, of uh, of the sound landscape, the cultural landscape of that region. It's an echo of the rurality. And uh, there was a point where they were working on a law that authorized them to be removed to the countryside. Mm -hmm. And then I, I imagine this um, delirious situation of, uh, of, uh, mm -hmm. of these, uh, if they were invisible to, to the citizens and to the, to the official gaze of the city, what if they were all together by a chance? Mm -hmm. So that's how it started. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I worked on the pyramid to, to shoot a film that had mm -hmm. a scene of a horse race, mm -hmm. and then to the carters, 
I announced a horse race where prizes would be given and a film would be shot. And that's a little bit of the of the story behind the, this project. One little comment which might be very obvious, but I think it's important, especially for maybe anybody watching in the US, is that um, um, horse um, transportation is super important in like humble areas of South America, all over South America, it's the same thing in Argentina where I came from. Um, because uh, it allows, you know, like a lot of people live of like collecting cardboard or recycling items or, and they use the horses and the horse car and, and the carts to transport these materials or to transport like uh, agricultural goods from like, you know, like a small, like, like um, production yeah. that they have. Um, so the prohibition of uh, animal uh, transportation in the cities is usually a very conservative uh, ruling that many cities have. Mm, and there are reasons for it also, but it's, it also has to do with a very um, like oppressive system of economy and transportation of goods uh, in the area. So we can see the video whenever you tell me, or we can see the floor. Yeah, no, we, we, could, we could take a look uh, mm -hmm. a little bit of the video. And I think it was super, uh, I don't know how to describe, but one of the most hardcore things mm -hmm. in, the, in terms of projects that I've experienced mm -hmm. because it was outdoors. I, it was an open call, so I had no idea if people could come or not. In the end, around 200 people showed up. They, uh, they got late a lot and mm -hmm. I had like a, like a, like a support of the police, of, uh, of the local police thinking that that was only a film being shot, ready to be, to interrupt the traffic for the, for the scene. But actually the scene was actually a happening, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I, I invited 15 people between friends and people who worked with the cinema locally to be in different moments of the, of the course we were working on. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and all these takes were, were, done in different perspectives by these uh, amazing group of uh, filmmakers that were collaborating to do this project. And uh, mm -hmm. when it started, I, I was part of the, of the mass. I was not, I had no control anymore. It had like a, a <laughs> like a, That's it beautiful. like a fourth by its own. And I was only one single person that provoked within a group of people, but in the end, that took a, a, an existence by itself. Mm -hmm. And it was so powerful and made me think uh, a lot about the city and a, a, a lot about uh, these, these people who are super part of the town and uh, they make things, they, they make things happen. They have like a, they have a very peculiar way of using the town. They, 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 they depend on that for work and they are completely ignored by the official uh, government who, who and, and the official gays who thinks that they are only chaos for traffic. So mm -hmm. who is the city? Uh, who is the city for? No. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, so the uprising is also to take these limitations and the disadvantages on on uh, mm -hmm. on with uh, a cheerful. Uh, braveness, you know. So the mm -hmm. the whole point was to to take these these images of the horse race and uh, and uh, edit them as if they there was an uprising, if there was if it if it was a, a sort of revolution from the carters, from the rural people within the city, mm -hmm. and uh, this fictional uh, uh, approach uh, became a became this, this trigger for these, uh, the motivation for, for this whole thing to happen. We have and a comment uh, here, a very beautiful one that says that the human component in this work is amazing and, and, and they make a comment about the facial expressions of the people in this uh, video. I don't know if you see, for example, yeah. here, that the participants are super excited and what this person is commenting, Sylvia is saying that uh, they like they thought they were on the Olympics, which I think is beautiful, and I agree. <laughs> I think something beautiful is that, I mean, 
that yeah, the excitement that this probably created. Um, no, it I think was, it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a, it's a very nice comment because it, it was definitely really emotional. Like, uh, and uh, mm. I had a bunch of friends together with me. We were so involved. And uh, in a very crazy, poetically, and, and even naive uh, way, because uh, we were all so convinced that that was like a powerful to have those people going around in, in the city that I didn't even imagine that it, it could go wrong, no? But when it was <laughs> closer, it was, it was, it could be a chaos, no? And, uh, yeah. And, uh, and I remember like almost not sleeping in that day when it, when it finally happened, and we could have accidents, we could have so many things happen. And then it went yeah. well. It was so energetic, so sparky, you know. Uh, it was something yeah. that, yeah, it's it's almost 10 years already, but, but it's something that... I'm glad, is, I'm, uh, I'm glad you didn't breath. talk about it. I feel like um, when you think too much about the risk, people, we all tend to not do things, especially from the institutional side. So I'm glad that mm. we're a little bit unconscious. It's yeah. part of like, it's part of the recipe for a great project. <laughs> mm. All right. So uh, I don't know. I mean, everybody's talking about how much they love this project. Um, yeah, so nice. I see. I see many friends. Saying, here you are. Um, here is Sean. That's E. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Do you work area. with community organizations or activists when you try to reach to this type of participants or? Well, um, it really depends, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, um, it became frequent that my mm -hmm. projects relate to, to, to communities or to, to certain groups and mm -hmm. then, and, and the, and through throughout the the course of these projects, I've uh, experienced many levels of engagement and involvement, and mm -hmm. uh, I some of them are are uh, are started by uh, uh, this initial spark. Sometimes an observation, sometimes mm -hmm. a, a a situation, but more recently, I've uh, I've tried. Uh, other ways of collaborating to mm -hmm. to to some projects, no? Like recently, I've worked with a uh, with a, a community of deaf people in the Sertão, mm -hmm. in the dry area of the northeast, and they created their own language. Yeah, maybe we can talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was part of the commission by the MCA show, and uh, even the curator Jose. Sparsa is watching us here. Yeah, and, hello, um, Jose. And it was a, a collaboration community uh, mm -hmm. of this little village called Vazia Queimada. Mm -hmm. He invited me to go there, and they develop a work on the on weaving baskets with this group of women. And he he told me, look, these uh, these group of people are amazing. They created these uh, these sign language here, and uh, and it's fascinating. And when I got to meet them, they they were brilliant because everything was so mimetical and uh, and so theatrical, and uh, and uh, and and they accepted and they were happy with the idea that a project were, could. Could be closer uh, and and uh, and depict their stories, their their way of living. So mm -hmm. basically, the project is a beginning of a of a of a catalog of these gestures of these lexicon through mm -hmm. these invented ways uh, uh, of these communities speaking, and uh, and uh, of course, I I borrowed the the intimacy that Marcelo and the Instituto Gente Transforma uh, has have the 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 whole liability that these people have on their work. So I could arrive and take a and a, and take mm -hmm. a and start right off with this uh, warmth, which is mm. so important when you do a project like that. And uh, 
so Marcelo is also watching us. He's my boyfriend here, and uh, and he and I'm always thankful for having this chance of uh, mm -hmm. of uh, of uh, of getting so closer to people, which is another way of uh, experiencing the 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 engagement with these communities. You know, so in my previous mm -hmm. projects. Sometimes I would get closer by the idea of uh, of the mm -hmm. project itself, and here it was way around. I, I I met the people, then I realized what could come out of that, which is a very nice way to to experience that. Mm -hmm. and, Do you uh, want to? I think I mean that gets even more exacerbated, and maybe we can talk about the last project that we brought to the table. Uh, formally in our list on uh, in our list of uh, uh, works to discuss, which is hangers of resistance. Um, yes, this this is also an image of the show at the MCA, and uh, uh, also following the the the, mm -hmm. the tours and the and the missions of the Instituto Gente Transforma. They work with a group of indigenous women. From the the Kayapo ethnicity uh, in South Para in the Amazon, mm -hmm. and they this group of women they they paint uh, uh, these graphisms on, in their bodies for rituals for uh, mm -hmm. uh, for daily life situations, and I had these uh, these maps uh, which were historical maps. The, of their own territory, mm -hmm. marked like a uh, marked by law, and I proposed that they would uh, paint on the map. So it's a it's a sort of a clash of drawings. Mm -hmm. uh, one drawing which is from Western culture, which, which is about mapping territory, possession, and the maps on uh, and the drawings, which is much more ritual related and. Uh, which has nothing to do with uh, these use of uh, of the other drawing, mm -hmm. and uh, within doing so, they they these group of women uh, they 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 go with their their painting much beyond the the red borderline of their territory, mm -hmm. and um, so the whole point is that they for their culture they uh, the ones who performed. Each one of those paintings, they're not uh, the whole community, which is very interesting. So the idea of the individual and collective is is pretty much peculiar, and I think it it uh, it uh, it shifts a little bit how we sh we understand uh, the idea of uh, of being the of being the author of of having something of being individual in front of a of a, of a community. Mm -hmm. So, so the whole gesture of painting on the on the drawing of the territory made me photograph uh, the the painters with through their hands as a way of underlining the gesture of resistance and also to to experience in photography removing this concentration on the face on the individual as something to uh, that is that it usually so much stressed on so here's mm -hmm. an image of them uh, uh, holding their the, the photograph of their of their hands and when we see that all together I think it gives a, um, a very strong uh, 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 appeal no impression uh, mm -hmm. especially when we are we are we are sorry especially when we are uh, working on on when we are in a moment of uh, of really so much stra uh, threat on yeah. the indigenous communities no like uh, uh, it's hard not to mention but president bolsonaro is is mm -hmm. really loosening up the borders of the of the Amazon, so protected indigenous lands are being threatened by mining, by by the mm -hmm. 
by by invasions and uh, and, also, uh, and, and, and and the covid virus has been like destroying the communities which is the latest of a series of like terrible interventions on these communities exactly, uh, exactly. since last year i mean in between the fires and yeah so, so it's a, uh, it's a it's a policy of completely genocide of these communities absolutely completely, absolutely. completely absurd and unaccept, unacceptable mm -hmm. because these small invasions to get uh uh metal and mining also is a threat because of coronavirus at this mm -hmm. point so it's a very very much delicate point um, Somebody is asking about these works and ownership, and I think it's interesting to highlight that you you list them as authors of these works, right? Uh, they appear as let me find it, but I just saw it on the website that uh, you list them as the painters, right? So in in, in a way, they are the co-authors of this project, right? Yes, yes, uh, mm -hmm. they are. They are the 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 this whole discussion on 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 the author of the painting uh, mm -hmm. in relation to the to the community is also very interesting because this collaboration is incorporated in this project and uh, mm -hmm. the photographs have their have their names and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, and also one third of the eventual sales will go back to the community which in this moment mm -hmm. would be really nice because of what mm -hmm. they're going through as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's very important. I think it's yeah. important to highlight that. Um, I think it's such a such an important project. I mean, and, and I mean, there's another Brazilian historical Brazilian artist who, who has been working about maps, but also about ideas of the indigenous, which is Annabella Geiger. Um, and, and this project is such an interesting like contemporary take on her ideas on mapping and also her ideas about the, the, the racial tensions in the 1970s in between the two in Brazil Nativo, Brazil Alienation. I think it's a beautiful like reference. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, nice. I think nice. that is great. And, and also, I don't know, I feel like so many of your projects, maybe I'll show as well like a quick review because we have like 10 more minutes. So I'm gonna be like searching through, I don't know, if First of all, I want to invite everybody to send questions if you have any other ones about any of these projects. We that have a few nice. minutes, I, which I is see great. Lots of people, nice people over there. Yes, yeah. there's yeah. a lot of good friends around. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. um, yeah. So we've been talking with Jonathan about different projects and his practice in general. I think uh, going back and in case somebody like showing after one thing that we mentioned at the beginning that appears in all these like five projects that we've been discussing actually is six wow we we've been very organized in terms of like presenting <laughs> projects. Yes, I'm surprised. No, we were yeah like, me uh, too i thought we were gonna have time for only three and i think uh you did a yeah, fantastic we job of explaining so well yeah in the end we have uh, extra time no <laughs> But that's great. And I think that's something in common in between I mean something that you said at the beginning, which it's um it appears in on these projects is the tension in yeah. between the local and the global, right? Um, which I mean how your work it, it's it takes something very local and like very local traditions of the history of Brazil and specifically of northeastern Brazil, which is where you live and the scenario of your life and your works. Yeah. But at the same time to discuss very universal topics. And, and I think it's fantastic because you see that all throughout the works uh, and, and how timely, as we said, um, I know I'm repeating myself, but uh, it's, it's so important to think about the local right now that we kind of travel and we're going to have to rethink our idea of the global and our idea of community and our idea of connection. Um, this whole pandemic is forcing us to also rethink um, how we connect with these others yeah. that are among us uh, is making us think about how we touch, how we, you know, either in this piece, you know, the connection to nature and the touching of others um, in Opeche, uh, then uh, the community component. Um, yeah, it would be nice yeah, to go back. Yes, there we, maybe it would, would be nice also to to check these images of the caravan. I know we, so there is the the installation with images of the horse race, 
Mm-hmm. What else we have there? Uh, yeah. Yeah. This tells a story of a uh, of a collection mm-hmm. of of sweaty shirts from mm-hmm. workers from Recife, which is a work called Suara Camisa, working up a sweat. Mm-hmm. Here it's ABC da Cana, which is uh, the sugarcane ABC, an alphabet made with sugarcane stalks. Let me show uh, it to the by people. the workers of the sugarcane plantations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so in the it's caravana. Such a beautiful project. Yeah, in the caravana, we, we, I had a chance to work on paintings also to get closer to the students and uh, to mm-hmm. invite them over. And these were uh, presentations in the corridors of this school uh, uh, school program called SESCI. Mm-hmm. Here, this is one of the images of the Education for Adults, also in the Caravana. The posters in the middle of the, uh, mm-hmm. between the, the, the trees on, uh, on, on fabric, printed on tissue. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is nice. The people could make their own title of the museum poster and oh, themselves. Great. So it was people would put their names, their profession, mm-hmm. and it they would post on Instagram and I could follow a little bit. And it these has uh, been very nice you, as well. Can I, yeah, can I ask you something? Um, I mean, in this, I mean, I'm gonna keep showing these uh, images of the caravana because I think it's very important. Um, and this might sound like an obvious question, but I would love to hear your personal opinion. I mean, what? How does it change when you show these works in a museum and when you show them in these like uh, community-driven spaces? And, no, it's a great right? question because the whole point of the caravana was mm. ac- actually uh, to to respond to the feeling that always showing in museums and outside the northeast and abroad. Mm-hmm. Uh, it would never reach the the culture I'm from and the people I'm speaking about. I'm, I'm speaking like a, about in that condition. Mm-hmm. So it's been very uh, intense and emotional to see those mm-hmm. people who are uh, uh, part of uh, illiterate programs for education mm-hmm. uh, to see those works and mm-hmm. to talk to them a little bit. Yeah, during the opening, during the installation days, it has another flavor, and I think it goes back to, to, to me as an experience. It makes me think why uh, I, I I choose these themes to speak about, why yeah. these things are part of my history, but also fascinate me as a task, as an artistic an artistic task yeah. to to I don't know to keep going, no to 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 take this along yeah um, and also it makes us rethink um what this works i mean who this work speak about and who this work speak to when you are showing them in a museum i mean they also have a very important social mission because they're not only talking to the curators of the art world uh you know um but they're also yeah. talking to the community to other communities that as we said at before they might not understand the local but they understand the very universal yeah, aspect yeah, yeah, yeah. of the practice mm-hmm. yeah the mm-hmm. art in and museums they can be mm-hmm. very much elitistic and uh, the art mm-hmm. world is a lot uh, mm-hmm. can be very in a very much at an intellectual uh, discussion level and mm-hmm. uh, and i think uh, it can be much more than that. When we speak of educational pedagogical purposes, it's not only within the museum, but uh, when it goes mm-hmm. to the streets, to other, to, to the schools, when it goes to books, when it's more democratical. And I think it's, uh, for me, it annoyed a little bit within time that I, that I, it felt I had to do this move a little bit as mm-hmm. well. So I, I proposed to this Brazilian fund, to, to Fulcultura, which is a local fund, especially mm-hmm. for that. And it was a very nice experience to me. Like, uh, I think it makes total sense, total sense to, to, to combine uh, all, all projects and, ha- and, and make them circulate. And the SESCI program uh, mm-hmm. in Brazil is also, uh, plays a very important role on that. 
I think this is super important. We only have a few more minutes. And right. I don't want to, Celia made a question, which I think in a way you already should answer, which is, you know, how do you see Brazil in the Latin American context of our production? Um, I mean, I think that in a way, if you allow me, I mean, please add anything to this, but also to, to start synthesizing. I mean, um, this it's so fantastic uh, to be able to see, um, you know, uh, the local and the international elements of this. And I feel like especially for anybody from the Americas, I mean, I say this is an Argentine and I wonder if somebody from Central America would feel the same, but this, uh, these projects and especially this type of display that you do in Caravana, uh, like speak so much to the community aspect and the way that art is shown in our community. Yeah, right? that's true. Yeah, mm -hmm. Brazil, Even, yeah. yeah. Sorry. No, no, Latin American in Brazil, there is always a, a huge lack of, uh, of museums that have solid budgets to take mm -hmm. along long terms, uh, long term uh, uh, programs. Uh, Brazil, mm -hmm. especially in São Paulo, it has a scene of uh, of, coll of, coll of collectors of, of museums which are more solid, which uh, sustains the mm -hmm. the art scene the brazilian art scene but the whole latin american condition i imagine there is uh, mm -hmm. there is there is a, a, always a struggle <coughs> on this continuity on this uh experimentation of new young artists to to find ways of uh to 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 uh, yeah. develop their careers and their points of views mm -hmm. i mean uh yeah fortunately with some moment where uh outside like uh these countries we uh it, there is a beginning of a of a latin american attention more and more and uh yeah, yeah. i want to make sure we have two more minutes left but i want to make sure i show again this beautiful image which i feel like is important mm -hmm. now <laughs> Talking about Latin America, talking about the world, yeah. talking about the local and the global, talking about all of us. I mean, this idea of, you know, the roundabout, this idea of like holding hands and connections, which is something that yeah. I feel like we don't know if we'll be able to do again, but I feel it's a beautiful thing about um, this inspiring um, yeah. work of yours and this inspiring work of these communities that you're portraying and that you are inviting to be part of your work. Yeah. Um, well, thank you very much. Uh, it was great talking to you. It was and, uh, beautiful. I wish we uh, it was my first so. I live. I was a bit nervous, but, but yeah, but yes. it was a great conversation. And